Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to install an EXP GDC 8.4 Beast um, eGPU. So this is an adapter to give, give your laptop the ability to carry a full-size desktop video card. So the package doesn't come with much. It comes with the EXP and you can check which version you have. It stands inside there. I can't really get a focus on it, but you will see it when you have it. So it also comes with this for a power supply unit and a mini PCI to HDMI. So you have two options for power. You can use like a power supply unit, which I don't. This one is not powerful, plus it has a lot of coil wine. I'll just demonstrate it for the video, but I don't usually use that. The one I use is actually down below there. It's a Dell 2A something, and I'll link one. They're really cheap. I bought mine for like 13 euros. They have 220 watts, and they have plenty power to power any GPU you give them. I even powered a 1070 with it, so you can power pretty much everything. So I really recommend that because that fits into the 8-pin right there. So um, for the power supply unit, I'm going to put this here and get my tripod. Hang on. The way I do it is, yeah, you don't even have much choice. You take your, I don't even know, I'm not good with these. I think this is 20, 24 pin connector. You look where the top thing is. You also have like this lip up here and you put it on the left side. So you can bend this and then put it on there. And the other one goes here. And maybe your power supply has more stuff Mine does not, that's it. And this one goes into the 8-pin at the eGPU, so like this. But again, I do not recommend this setup. And I'll put this to, to the side because I'm not going to be using it. The way I do it is I have my lead from my Dell Optiplex power supply coming out here. And I don't like this bead thing here. It would hang in the front, it's not nice. So I made an extension cable. This one I made myself and this is not something you can purchase because this doesn't fit really with this. So I made it fit. It was quite a hassle, but I really like it because if I put my eGPU now stand now here, I can put this in here and that's all you see. This is the one you see and this one's in the back here. So it's not that noticeable, especially when the video card is in there. I also would suggest applying double-sided tape on the bottom. Mine is wearing out, but it's still some under there. And just place it somewhere near your laptop. You're gonna need a video card. I'm using the 960 for this. And this is something not always included in the package, but I really recommend buying it. You need it, so this is a six pin to two times eight pin with the possibility of six pins. So, what you can do with that is giving power to your video card by putting the six pin in here. You can put it in the power ports of the video card. Mine only needs one eight pin. So I have a Frankenstein that I made myself, which is just six to eight. So I'm going to put that in here, place the video card on top, move it on the position I want it to be. And then I put the eight pin straight into my GPU. So, this is how mine looks. It's really minimal. So I have the power lead here, the six to eight pin, which starts here, going here. And you also, you this is optional, but I really suggest it because getting the eGPU without using an external screen is a little bit of a waste. Your laptop will improve also on the internal screen, but it will be more bottlenecked. So I run this on my internal screen and on my television, and the television is the one that I would put games on the renderings because it does get a lot more improvement. So I put the HDMI in here and that one goes to my TV. The thing is this, does, this, this used to not work for me, but I downgraded to Windows 7 and now it's working. So I couldn't run from the eGPU and HDMI cable. I had to run it from the HDMI port of my computer. So uh, to your computer, the only cable you really have left is the mini PCI to HDMI. And this varies with every laptop. So I have an Asus laptop, an N73. It's not a common laptop, but this is the poor problem. Every laptop has a different way to get this done. So you will have to look up this for your laptop. You have to disassemble it for at least a bit. Not much, but 
Mine works the following. You have to, there are like holes in the keyboard. You stick something in there and the keyboard pops up. You have to take out the keyboard, unscrew a bunch of screws and that gives me access on the other side to the HDDs and the RAM and the mini PCI port. So that's how I had to do it. Yours might be just popping this open or having the screws down here. Not everybody needs to disassemble their uh, keyboard to get this open. So if you have found your way to do that and open it up, you can think about getting a more permanent solution like I have. I have made this hole here with the Dremel, as you can see, and I can always access my mini PCI port and this will go over it for dust protection and stuff. But all I have to do now is just install my mini PCI here. And this is really useful for keeping your laptop portable because if I need to go somewhere, I can just open this up, screw this out, take my laptop and be gone. So for home use, when I'm using the eGPU, I just, you could run this with one screw, but I have my patience, so I'll just use both of them. So I screw this in. This is where usually the, the Wi-Fi model would be, and I have a USB Wi-Fi model, and I use an Ethernet cable, so I don't even need that one, but I still have one. But then you just put this over as a cover, and I run this lead out here. I have some double-sided tape here, so it's pulled in place. But that's how I do it. This is my semi-permanent solution because I can remove it pretty easy. And then I just put my laptop down like it's used to be and put the HDMI into the HDMI port of the eGPU. So. I'm going to plug in the rest of the laptop, USB, Ethernet, Wi-Fi, and power. So this is pretty much how my setup looks. So I have everything connected now. That's pretty much all you need to do. The only thing you have to really look up is how to install the mini PCI on your laptop. So again, just a quick overlook. PCI cable comes out, goes into the HDMI. This is the power cable that goes down to the power brick. Um, there's a six pin down there that goes up into the eight pin here and that powers the video card. And of course, an HDMI cable that runs to my television. So once you have all that cleared up, you want to start up your PC and you don't need to do anything special, just boot up your PC and then I'll show what to do from there. Mine just started up as you can hear. So once you start it up, it will show that it installed a VGA graphics adapter. And if you look here, now it's showing an error on my 540, which is not a problem that's because I usually have my setup running but here's the standard VGA adapter this is my 960 so all you have to do is um, pretty much just head over to the Nvidia site or Google at least enter Nvidia drivers and here you just pick the desktop series 960 so or any one you have so if you have any other just do that. If you have a 10 series card, you need to download first a lower version. I will show that really quick. But if you have, I had done that in Windows 10, so I'm gonna show that. Um, for the 1070, I downloaded first this one. You need that to at least get the video card started working, otherwise it won't. Once you have installed this, you can upgrade to the latest, to 3.84 currently. You can do that, it works, I've tested it. But first you have to do this. But um, for the 9 series or anything, select your system. If you have Windows 10, take Windows 10. You just press download, agree and download, and the desktop version is downloading. So let me see. Yeah, that will be done in a second because I'm downloading pretty quickly. Once that's done, the 
you can run it as administrator and I always change this I don't know why but I just change this to my desktop and then put Nvidia and usually I name them like the drivers that they are for what Windows version and what video card and then I put them into my backup folder but you just extract the card drivers My computer is dying because I'm recording now on the Intel HD because my 540 is also not working currently so I'm a bit out of luck and I hope the frame rate is good. So that's done. Oh that's, that's actually the new version I didn't even know that was out so there's 3.85. So I'll immediately know if that one works too <laughs> as I'm making this video. This always takes a little while. It can sometimes give you an error. Then you just have to reboot your computer because then it just it just installed the stock video card and it hasn't really comprehended it yet or something. So you just reboot and try this again. And make sure you download the desktop version if you have an external video card. All right, so it worked. Agree. Custom. I always do custom. I don't need 3D. You do need the audio drivers for the HDMI. I don't use experience because it's bugging me out with its login. Physics you need, so HD, audio, physics, and of course the drivers. And a clean installation, just because. Clean installation always makes sure that you get the least amount of errors because it's just that it's stock settings. If you had previously like a 540M like I have inside, you could have done some settings that mess up the 960 later or something. It's just a precaution. It could also just work, but... So once again, you just wait this out. Sometimes you have to reboot and that can be a little buggy, I don't know why, but sometimes it just installs the drivers and applies them as you install them. I'm not really sure, but if you install them and after the reboot it's not working, you have to pretty much just install it again. The best thing you can do is download a program called DDU. I can show that real quick while this is busy anyway. But um, DDU can remove your complete video card drivers, so I'm just gonna launch it and if you clean and restart and remove GeForce Experience this one you should do first and press no and then this and that will completely wipe out all your video card drivers from Nvidia that you had and you can install it again and then maybe it works then so if you have a problem with installation try to use DDU first so now it's finished uh, my recording stopped so I just waited till it was done and recorded again so now it's finished and all you have to do now is press restart and my I will show how it looks after I restart it. So I had myself some issues with the drivers and I had to myself use DDU to completely remove all drivers and I just installed the 960s 3.85 that I downloaded and for some reason it also installed the 540M with those drivers so I have both drive both video cards installed right now and here's the fun part it already works so it's using both video cards at the same time now as you can see here the 540M and the 960 are working but the 540M is idle and the 960 is all doing all the work because it's on the external screen of course and you can see I have now let's let's freeze a frame let's go somewhere hang on let me get a scene with a good FPS So let's just take this for example and I stop the frame and you can see I have 74 FT FPS but if I move this to my internal screen now you can see the FPS nearly halves to 40 that's because now it's traveling from the Intel HD to the external back to the Intel HD but just using it on the external screen boom the FPS shoots up that's because it's going from the Intel HD to the video card to the monitor and that makes a huge amount of improvement so you can see now the 960 is working but I still recommend to disable your internal video card when we're using an eGPU when you're going out you can enable it back but you should disable it it works but it might interfere and you can if you go to Nvidia control panel 
you can see both video cards are there but you can't assign any tasks to any video cards which you can normally do if you have the 960 you can say this runs on the Intel HD and this runs on the 960 now this function is completely missing so the computer is completely managing what to use so I wouldn't recommend that so disable it here just go to start computer right click manage and you will get this so disable the 540 and then reboot and it should be good so I'm gonna do that as you can see now the 540 is disabled my frame rate is still the same on this because it was using the 960 in the first place but the 540 is still standing here but it's completely off now so that's what I do so I wanted to include some advanced methods on uh, how to get this EGP running but this video became a little long so I'm gonna make two videos of that this one will be the basic setup and how to get it running and the other one will be a video on um, how to set up how to set up set up 1.35 which is used to get eGPUs running and also some uh, troubleshooting or advanced stuff bio stuff and to some errors that you can get and how to fix them as you can see I have 60 FPS at the moment but that's just in the sky the lower I get to the floor my FPS drops to like 40 45 45 is still very good, so I'm completely fine with this, and I just almost died. I have 50 FPS on the floor. That's really good. For a 2011 laptop, this is really amazing. On the original video card, I get like 5 or 4 FPS when playing GTA 5. So you can see this is really fluent. So thanks for watching, and if you have issues with the setup, then just watch the next video that will probably help you out and if not there are some other people that have issues that i don't know of you can probably find that too well thanks for watching bye